Hello all, welcome to our YouTube channel Jayashri Javaji. Today we are going to continue reading the part 19 of the book Rich Dad Poor Dad written by Robert Kiyosaki. Chapter 6, Lesson 6 Work to Learn, Don't Work for Money continues. It was this business consultant who gave me the phrase they are one skill away from great wealth. What this phrase means is that most of the people need only to learn and master one more skill and their income would jump exponentially. I have mentioned before that financial intelligence is a synergy of accounting, investing, marketing and law. Combine those four technical skills and making money with money is easier than most people would believe. When it comes to money, the only skill most people know is to work hard. The classic example of a, of a synergy of skills was that young writer for the newspaper. If she diligently learned the skills of sales and marketing, her income would jump dramatically. If I were her, I would take some courses in advertising, copyrights as well as sales. Then instead of working at the newspaper, I would seek a job at an advertising agency. Even if it were a cut in pay, she would learn how to communicate in shortcuts that are used in successful advertising. She also would spend time learning public relations and important skill. She would learn how to get millions in free publicity. Then at night and on weekends, she could be writing her great novel. When it was finished, she would be better able to sell her book. Then, in a short while, she could be a best-selling author. When I came out with my first book, If You Want to Be Rich and Happy, Don't Go to School, a publisher suggested I change the title to The Economics of Education. I told the publisher that with a title like that, I would sell two books, one to my family and one to my best friend. The problem is that they would expect it for free. The obnoxious title, If You Want to Be Rich and Happy, Don't Go to School, was chosen because we knew it would get tons of publicity. I'm pro-education and believe in education reform. If I were not pro-education, why would I continue to press for changing our antiquated educational system? So, I chose a title that would get me on more TV and radio shows simply because I was willing to be controversial. Many people thought I was a fruitcake but the book sold and sold. When I graduated from the US Merchant Marine Academy in 1969, my educated dad was happy. Standard Oil of California had hired me for its oil tanker fleet as a third mate. The pay was low compared with my classmates but it was okay for a first real job after college. My starting pay was about $42,000 a year including overtime and I only had to work for 7 months. I have 5 months of vacation. If I had wanted to, I could have taken the run to Vietnam with a subsidiary shipping company and easily doubled my pay instead of taking 5 months of vacation. I had a great career ahead of me Yet, I resigned after 6 months with the company and joined the Marine Corps to learn how to fly. My educated dad was devastated. Rich dad congratulated me. In school and in the workplace, the popular opinion is the idea of specialization. That is, in order to make more money or get promoted, you need to specialize. That is why medical doctors immediately begin to seek a speciality such as orthopedics or pediatrics. The same is true for accountants, architects, lawyers, pilots and others. My educated dad believed in the same dogma. That is why he was thrilled when he eventually achieved his doctorate. He often admitted that schools reward people who study more and more about less and less. Rich dad encouraged me to do exactly the opposite. You want to know a little about a lot was his suggestion. That is why for years I worked in different areas of his companies. For a while I worked in his accounting department. 
although I would properly, sorry, probably never have been an accountant, he wanted me to learn via osmosis. Rich dad knew I would pick up jargon and a sense of what is important and what is not. I also worked as a busboy and construction worker as well as in sales, reservations and marketing. He was grooming Mike and me. That is why he insisted we sit it on the meetings with his bankers, lawyers, accountants and brokers. He wanted us to know a little about every aspect of his empire. When I quit my high paying job with Standard Oil, my educated dad had a heart to heart talk with me. He was bewildered. He could not understand my decision to resign from a career that offered high pay, great benefits, lots of time off and opportunity for promotion. When he asked me one evening, why did you quit? I could not explain it to him, though I tried hard to. My logic did not fit his logic. The big problem was that my logic was my rich dad's logic. Job security meant everything to my educated dad. Learning meant everything to my rich dad. Educated dad thought I went to school to learn to be a ship's officer. Rich dad knew that I went to school to study international trade. So, as a student, I made cargo runs, navigating large freighters, oil tankers and passenger ships to the Far East and the South Pacific. Rich Dad emphasized that I should stay in the Pacific instead of taking ships to Europe because he knew that the emerging nations were in Asia, not Europe. While most of my classmates, including Mike, were partying at their fraternity houses, I was studying trade, people, business styles and cultures in Japan, Taiwan, Thailand, Singapore, Hong Kong, Vietnam, Korea, Tahiti, so Samoa and the Philippines. I was partying also, but it was not in any friend house. I grew up rapidly. Educated dad just could not understand why I decided to quit and join the marine crops. Corps. I told him I wanted to learn to fly, but really I wanted to learn to lead troops. Rich dad explained to me that the hardest part of running a company is managing people. He had spent three years in the army. My educated dad was draft exempt. Rich dad valued learning to lead men into dangerous situations. Leadership is what you need to learn next, he said. If you are not a good leader, you will get shot in the back just like they do in business. Returning from Vietnam in 1973, I resigned my commission even though I loved flying. I found a job with Xerox Corp. I joined it for one reason and it was not for the benefits. I was a shy person and the thought of selling was the most frightening subject in the world. Xerox has one of the best sales training programs in America. Rich dad was proud of me. My educated dad was ashamed. Being an intellectual, he thought that salespeople were below him. I worked with Xerox for four years until I overcame my fear of knocking on doors and being rejected. Once I could consistently be in the top five in sales, I again resigned and moved on, leaving behind another great career with an excellent company. In 1977, I formed my first company. Rich Dad had groomed Mike and me to take over companies. So, I now had to learn to form them and put them together. My first product, the nylon and velcro wallet, was manufactured in the Far East and shipped to a warehouse in New York near where I had gone to school. My formal education was complete and it was time to test my wings. If I failed, I would go broke. Rich Dad thought it best to go broke before 30. You still have time to recover, was his advice. On the eve of my 30th birthday, my first shipment left Korea for New York. Today, I still do business internationally. And as my rich dad encouraged me to do, I keep seeking the emerging nations. Today, my investment company invests in South American countries and Asian countries as well as in Norway and Russia. There is an old glitch that goes, 
job is an acronym for just over broke. Unfortunately, I would say that applies to million of people. Because school does not think financial intelligence is an intelligence, most workers live within their means. They work and they pay the bills. There is another horrible management theory that goes, workers work hard enough to not be fired and owners pay just enough so that workers won't quit. And if you look at the pay scale of most companies, again, I would say there is a degree of truth to that statement. The net result is that most workers never get ahead. They do what they have been taught to do, get a secure job. Most workers focus on working for pay and benefits that reward them in the short term but are often disastrous in the long run. Instead, I recommend to young people to seek work for what they will learn more than what they will earn. Look down the road at what skills they want to acquire before choosing a specific profession and before getting trapped in the rat race. Once people are trapped in the lifelong process of bill paying, they become like those little hamsters running around in those metal wheels. Their little furry legs are spinning furiously, the wheel is turning furiously, but come tomorrow morning, they'll still be in the same cage. Great job. In the movie Jerry Maguire starring Tom Cruise, there are many great one-liners. Probably the most memorable is, show me the money. But there is one line I thought most truthful. It comes from the scene where Tom Cruise is leaving the firm. He has just been fired and he is asking the entire company, who wants to come with me? And the whole place is silent and frozen. Only one woman speaks up and says, I would like to, but I am due for a promotion in three months. That statement is probably the most truthful statement in the whole movie. It is the type of statement that people used to keep themselves busy working away to pay bills. I know my educated dad looked forward to his pay raise every year and every year he was disappointed. So, he would go back to school to earn more qualifications so he could get another raise. Then, once again, there would be another disappointment. The question I often ask people is, where is this daily activity taking you? Just like the little hamster, I wonder if people look at where their hard work is taking them. What does the future hold? In his book, The Retirement Myth, Craig S. Carpel writes, I visited the headquarters of a major national pension consulting firm and met with the managing director who specializes in designing lush retirement plans for top, top management. When I asked her what people who don't have corner offices will be able to expect in the way of pension income, she said with a confident smile, the silver bullet. What I asked is the silver bullet. She shrugged and said, if baby boomers discover they don't have enough money to live on when they are older, they can always blow their brains out. Carpel goes on to explain the difference between the old defined benefit retirement plans and the new 401k plans that are riskier. It is not a pretty picture for most people working today and that is just for retirement. Add medical fees and long-term nursing home care and the picture is frightening. Already many hospitals and countries with socialized medicine need to make tough decisions such as who will live and who will die. They make those decisions purely on how much money they have and how old the patients are. If the patient is old, they often will give the medical care to someone younger. The older poor patient gets put to the back of the line. Just as the rich can afford better education, the rich will be able to keep themselves alive while those who have little wealth will die. So, I wonder, are workers looking into the future or just until their next paycheck, never questioning where they are headed? When I speak to adults who want to earn more money, I always recommend the same thing. I suggest taking a long view of their life. Instead of simply working for the money and security, which I admit are important, 
I suggest they take a second job that will teach them a second skill. Often I recommend joining a network marketing company also called multi-level marketing if they want to learn sales skills. Some of these companies have excellent training programs that help people get over their fear of failure and rejection which are the main reasons people are unsuccessful. Education is more valuable than money in the long run. Okay all, let's end up for today. In the coming recordings, we shall see how Robert emphasizes the point that education is more valuable than money in the long run. Thank you for continuously listening to our recordings. Have a wonderful day.